Hi everyone, I'm back. Uh, no real excuse for why I've been gone for so long, but uh, you know, here I am. Today, I'm going to tell you why you should go and see Wreck-It Ralph 2. Because I liked it. If you've seen any of my previous videos, have spent time talking to me, or just in general know me, then you probably know I've had a few problems with the film. To put it simply, Wreck-It Ralph 2 does not live up to the splendor of the original film and will likely be dated within the next few years. That said, it's still a fun film, wonderfully animated, and far better than I anticipated it being. Wreck-It Ralph is one of the films Disney has released in the last decade that I personally adore. It's a fun romp through an imaginative arcade world with engaging characters, a well thought out story, and enough references to video games and the culture of it to keep nerds like me satisfied. It too has its own problems, like the plot relying a little too much on being in Sugar Rush to justify way too many candy related puns, but the overall product makes me happy from start to finish, thanks to its dedication to the characters this world has given us and not relying on established franchises like Sonic or Zangief. When I first heard about Wreck-It Ralph 2, I was excited. A chance to explore more of this world that I enjoy? Awesome. Even better, it's not Frozen 2. As more information about the film released, and we learn that one of the film's main story threads is Vanellope and Ralph going to the internet to try and save Sugar Rush after an accident causes the steering wheel on the game console to come off, I was sold. It was a chance to bring these two characters that I personally love into an environment they are unfamiliar with and get into crazy hijinks. However, as more previews and trailers have come out, I started to become concerned. The trailer showcased the plot, sure, but once this scene showed up, every advertisement had to include it and a lot of the advertising seemed to focus heavily on the cross-promotion with other Disney franchises. When they didn't want to focus on that, there were a lot of jokes based on current internet culture or references to popular websites and, you know, just general internet gags. It made me think they were focusing less on making a good sequel to a film I love and more on making a film for the sake of cheap internet jokes with the occasional game reference thrown in. Thankfully, the film is enjoyable and fun, giving us a deeper dive into the relationship between Vanellope and Ralph. The main emotional tension of the film is not based on some forbidden love or something like that, but the tension between two longtime friends when one of them is thinking of changing the way things are. Thankfully, not in a turbo-like situation, but that's not here or there. The film does have a few genuine surprises that I personally did not see coming, and thankfully it doesn't dip too deep into that Disney well when it comes to the princesses or cross-promotion or anything like that. The princess scene and subsequent Disney overload is pretty quick, but it does kind of do that thing that Disney films have been doing in recent history, where they like to comment on Disney's potentially troubled history, trying to you know rewrite our nostalgia to those of us who grew up with these films, rather than try and make new memories for a whole new generation of viewers. Teaching another girl to read isn't one enough. Thankfully, this time around, that mentality didn't distract from the film, kind of like the ending of Zootopia or pretty much all of Frozen did, so I give it a pass. Like the first film, this one does have a lot of small details that people can look out for, giving fans a chance to find hidden nuggets of fandom that show just how much the directors and art team know their stuff. However, the first film made a point to not call attention to a lot of these, and with some of the better, more subtle references being in the background as characters, or graffiti in Game Central Station, or something like that. The sequel might have the potential to have more recognizable references for the general public, but they put them directly in the viewer's face, which comes off as less of an acknowledgement of the core audience, and more of a statement about which companies Disney managed to get money from to be put in the film. On the plus side to this, much like the princess moment that I mentioned before, they don't really over rely on this point. A lot of these references are used for quick jokes that aren't on screen for very long, and the film utilizes apps that the team themselves created, making this one infinitely better than the Emoji Movie, which shoves apps down your throat because it realized it had no reason to exist and was only making money because you know what Spotify and Just Dance are. Seriously, don't 
don't watch the Emoji Movie. I I watched it drunk with a friend, and not even halfway through the film, and that shit sobered me up. It's not good, like, at all. Just don't watch it. I, nearly every worry I had for this film was wiped away when I actually did see it. Disney's ads might have focused on the princesses or internet humor or what have you, but overall the completed project is much more than that. It can be preachy at times, it dips into that problem I have with modern Disney about having to comment on old Disney, and I wish we would have had a more unique or new plot, but overall the product I say, it's worth seeing. It's very well animated, has a few genuine surprises that I won't spoil here, and is a worthy if inferior successor to the first film. I personally say y'all should check it out if you're a fan of the original, and if you care about number-based ratings because this is YouTube and whatnot, I'd say I'd give it an 8 out of 10, which in my book means it's a solid film, with only a few problems, but those problems don't necessarily detract from the fun time within. Check it out for yourself and tell me what you think. Leave a comment below and let's, uh, let's just get talking. And if you do really want to know my thoughts on the more spoilery side of things, leave a comment down below too. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video next week. We'll see. And on that note, I want to say thank you all for watching. It was just a quick little review, my thoughts on the film, without spoiling anything. And uh, hopefully soon, we'll be back with more videos. Thanks a lot, guys, and take care.